let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that you uh, answer our prayers in ways that glorify your name. Lead us to remember our war dead this day and to remember those things that led us into war so that they may be avoided at all costs. Let us always remember that the more we seek and follow you, the more we offer ourselves up to you, the more we give ourselves over to you, and the more uh, the leadership of our countries truly seek to do your will, the less there will be any word or speech of war. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, of course, today is Memorial Day here in the United States, and it's actually the or the original date for Memorial Day, which was May 30th, but then it could change to the first or the, the Monday closest to uh, May 30th. So it is a unique day in the fact that it's a holiday, it is Memorial Day, it is the day we remember our war dead. And there's something that always confused me up until recently, and that is uh, a basic biblical and spiritual principle is that war is the punishment for sin. And I'm like, well, how, how do I understand that? It's almost like a war happens because people are sinning. And with the recent developments in Eastern Europe and other places of the world, we realize that actually war is, in a sense, the punishment for sin because sin is what causes war. It's because people will make decisions that lead to war, even decisions that start wars, and if they were truly living within the gospel of the Lord, even though they may claim to be so, the wars wouldn't happen. So when in fact, there is a truth to that. Uh, one of the important things to look at, I mean, we can always say that war is caused when we have people who uh, seek to prosecute a war in light of worldly values. I mean, that you know, that's one of the things that St. James talks about when he talks about war is caused by passions. And, you know, basically what he, he means is that nations seeking their desires and their passions. We can see James talking about it in the fourth chapter where he talks exactly that. Where do these wars come from? Is it not through your passions, and it, is it not that you covet what you do not possess? And so what happens is wars will happen because of different aspects of humanity that people make decisions that lead to wars. In the case that's going on in Eastern Europe, the cause of war is that people uh, Vladimir Putin did not want Russia to be surrounded by NATO. Now, that is not a reason to start a war, but it also looks at that aspect, and that's where he started prosecuting the war. And also, it looks at all the different aspects. One of the, one of the what's happening in the solution? Well, if he doesn't stop, then what we're going to do is we're going to send more weapons to the Ukraine to protect the Ukraine. That's fine. But is there another alternative that will cause a de-escalation of the war instead of an escalation? And that's where prayer and our relationship with Christ is so important. And that also is where you have um, bishops who are blessing aspects of war. Well, that's wrong, completely, you know, absolutely wrong, if anything. Now, granted, if bishops in Russia speak out against the war, they'll probably become missing bishops in Russia, which Russia is known for. But in any case, we see that reality that there's a lot of humanity that's going into this war. And what needs to stop is looking at what human decisions have caused this. And in fact, some people are saying that the reason for the war is because of Western values. But if you look at the basic principle, it's because Russia does not want to be surrounded by NATO. And all of that is a uh, bunch of passions and fears and angers and covetousness and all that that's causing this huge problem. And 
all of that could be solved when people say, we don't want to do our will, we want to do God's will. Is that going to stop the war? Probably at this point, no. Could it have prevented the war in the first place if Mr. Putin was really seeking to do the will of God? Absolutely. Because if we look at what's gone on in Russia, Russia was getting a tremendous amount of respect from the world after the Soviet era, and now it's lost all that. And unfortunately, so we see all that going on. And that's where wars do come from. They come literally from sin. We can understand them as punishment for sin, but I think it's more or less the consequences of sin and not and sin is when we are not focusing on the Lord. So we can see that's absolutely true. In today's uh, readings, we have, uh, obviously, in light of Easter, because we are now in the seventh week of Easter, we see something pretty powerful where we want to talk about the different aspects of baptism and what happened when people were baptized in Christ as opposed to baptized in John. And we're looking, continuing to look through the Acts of the Apostles, which of course is always the first reading throughout Easter. So we're going to hear this first reading from the Acts of the Apostles right up until uh, next Monday. And next Monday we obviously get back into ordinary time. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE 590 AM. And you can also hear us at CatholicAudioMedia.com and other podcast platforms. Don't forget to spread the word. Let people know why you listen and where you listen. We'll be right back. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Com. And don't forget our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. You can check out our website, check out the archives of the show, check out our Substack newsletter and more. You'll hear more about that at the end of the program. But don't forget, check out CatholicAudioMedia.com. So anyway, we're talking about this powerful message that we see in the first reading. And what we're looking at is this whole understanding of this baptism. Now, what happens, this is from the 19th chapter chapter of Acts verses 1 through 8, if you happen to have your daily reading, or if you're looking at this on the web, or if you're looking at it uh, through a uh, daily missile you might have, or whatever the case may be. And there's something important that happens. So Paul lays his hands on th- this traveler that he meets, and What he does is he lays his hands upon him and gives him baptism. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. Then they spoke in tongues and prophesied. This was very common in the early church, and it was something that anytime you're reading about Christianity in the early church, anytime you're reading the letters of Paul, you can assume that that is going on in the background, that exactly that behavior is happening. And we see it in one. Corinthians 12. But we understand that that was part of early Christianity, and it was these people speaking in tongues, which is scientifically known as glossolalia. They're speaking language that they do not understand, but they do understand it as the Holy Spirit working through them, and they're prophesying, saying, speaking in the name of the Lord. When prophesying doesn't mean, and they're not saying, prophesying does not mean, well, tomorrow this is going to happen. Actually, people who have that gift awfully oftentimes have a gift that is not from God in that case. But it's a different gift. It's talking about the love of God. It's talking about people who need to hear the word of God in a special way. It's talking about different different things. Does it still happen today? Yes, it does. Do I know people? Yes, yes, I do, uh, who do that. Now, obviously, that has to be done with great discernment, which is usually, and that's that's obviously in the case of St. Paul, And, you know, because as St. John of the Cross says, there is a great chance of deception, even though it may appear directly from God. So, but that was very common. Now, one of the things that happens is a lot of people today are very suspicious of any of that, and they have these horrible legends that are just horrendous. 
one of them that gets around in some of these ministries will teach them of someone is at a prayer meeting speaking in tongues, and of course they don't know what language they're speaking, so they're speaking in tongues. Another person just happens to know that particular language and says, no, what you're actually doing is you're not praising God, you're praising the devil. Well, that's actually denial of the work of the Holy Spirit. It's important to understand that people will do that. It's a story that's very common in American circles, especially circles that reject the charismatic renewal. It's very common. And if you were to approach the people who tell the story and ask them to name names, they won't be able to because it's a story they heard from somebody who told the story. And that's the definite sign of an urban legend. That's what an urban legend is. It's these folklore stories that sound like they're real, but you can't trace them down. So, uh, here is the problem with this, and I've talked to other priests about this. It's very common in the United States for that story to make its rounds, and maybe parts of Europe. But here's the thing. Uh, you cannot be praising God and have the devil come out, meaning devil come out of your mouth as the words of the devil is what I mean. You can praise God and the devil. If the devil was in you, the devil will come out. Yes, I know that. But I mean, you can't be praising God with your heart and your mind and have the words of the devil come out. It just doesn't work. And if you are praising God in your heart and your mind, you're praising God. And that's why these urban legends, which are used to denigrate the uh, charismatic renewal, are just plain false. And they shouldn't be told unless people can name names. Just keep that in mind. Because as you can see, this phenomena is real, and it really is from the Holy Spirit. We'll talk more tomorrow. Have a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at Catholic catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.